Okay, so um, we want to have a look at the force nubit. This is a force nubit. It's actually um, a little bit like a hole saw in the sense that it's a, it's got a saw blade in the shape of a circle, um, but it's also integrated with something you could imagine as a chisel. And this piece here, this bladed piece here, is going to cut a flat bottomed hole. Okay, so it's much more efficient for drilling something really wide. That's why you don't really see drill bits, uh, wood drill bits this big, um, because it's going to peel out that flat bottom there. Um, now, we need to get it centered in the chuck, um, and I can tighten it um, enough for it to sit there by hand and then get the chuck key um, and turn that back towards the wall. Okay, and then that's set. Um, the other thing that I need to set on this is the depth and I'm going to do that in advance by changing on this drill the height of the machine bed. So I want to pull that down so that this doesn't go all the way through the clamp we've got the work in, that this stops um, that flat-bottomed hole at the depth that we want. And I've had that already marked on here, so I'm just going to have a look, and it's about there. Now on some drills, there's a little lock at the top that we just set, but on this one there's not, and it's allowing me to go you know, to there. Um, so what I need to do is undo this quick release lock on the side to change the depth on this one and then wind the handle down so that that machine bed drops to the height that I want. Um, and it fell in a big jump then, so I've got to wind it back up. And you might go a bit up and a bit down, but if you don't set the depth on this, it's going to be pretty tricky. Um, to stop your tool where you need it to stop. Okay, once you have set the depth, it's really important you lock that back on again, just with this quick release bar. Okay, so the handle moves the machine bed um, and the lock will keep it back in place. And that will also stop it swinging left to right. All right, and it's not gonna go farther than that. So I know now it isn't gonna go down into the clamp that I have, and it is gonna drill that hole the depth that I want. Um, now I've marked on the centre by crossing the diagonals and I've got it locked already, my work flat into this vise. I've not over squeezed that, um, you know, it's not kind of getting crushed in there, but I'm just going to line up the middle. And there's a little point on this force in a bit. And I'm putting that exactly where all my lines meet on the cross. And then just um, as ever with the pillar drill, I want to think about health and safety, so my hair's tied back. Um, I've got good covered shoes. Can you hand me some goggles? Just don't have goggles. Um, uh, wear goggles. I might press pause or something. Thank you. Okay, so um, now that we've got the safety sorted, it's always worth taking the time to do that, of course. Um, machine on. Doesn't hurt to do a test spin and check we've got that tool in right, although we did. And then literally I'm going to wind it down. Um, if you think about it, the outside of that is actually spinning, because it's quite big, much quicker um, than it would be if it was a drill bit on the inside because of its size. So I'm just going to allow it to take its time as I come down. So let it get up to full speed. One hand on the vice, just supporting it. Occasionally I come back out of the work just to let any material clear um, and to give it a little bit of, um, let it cool down just a little bit. We know with the depth setting on that that we're going to go um, as far as we can go until until that stops but I'll show you what it's done um, and what it does is just create a little flat bottomed hole there um, that's really nice and neat. Okay.